quote, our diversity is our strength, our unity is our power. That was Nancy Pelosi's motto when she was Speaker of the House. She's now the former Speaker, but still very much in the House of Representatives. Nancy Pelosi is here with me now. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, first question is about uh, whether or not you and other Democrats will vote to grant Patrick McHenry more powers, to expand his power, so that you can get on with the business of the American people, since the Republicans don't have the votes to elect a speaker properly. Well, uh, the, my motto is still the same. Our diversity is our strength. So we respect our differences of opinion, and that was, that's what makes us strong. The, uh, our leader, Hakeem Jeffries, has just managed this so very, very magnificently as what, listening to our caucus, uh, present, representing us so beautifully. And he will decide what the, uh, what the agreement could be, if there is one. Uh, so I'll just leave it up to him. However, I will say, from the standpoint of the speakership, you really cannot give Mr. McHenry power. Someone suggested, well, just let him do this and let him do that. No, you have to make him speaker, and then he has the awesome power of the speakership. Question is, for how long? The longevity of it? My hearing is that it will be to the end of this session, so until the end of the year. Secondly, what is the legislative scope of it? What does it contain? And third, as the structure, what, did they do anything about the motion to vacate or uh, what we do about motions, uh, other motions on the floor? So it's substance, it's timing, it's structure. It'll be up to Hakeem, and we all have confidence in him. Okay, so you'll, you'll go along with the current leader. But I, I, that's interesting what you just said, because there have been a lot of discussions about expanding Patrick McHenry, who is just a temporary speaker right now, expanding his powers, you're saying no, he just has to be full speaker. Full speaker. You have to elect him speaker, otherwise you... When you say elect him speaker, you mean have the votes on the floor, floor but just do it for a, temp for a limited for a li amount of time? A limited amount of time. And the other aspects of it relate to what agreement we could come to. I don't know what their vote is on the Republican side. I would hope that this could be a consensus vote, but it just depends on the scope, the language, and uh, One more question timing. on that. Does, does there need to be a promise for bipartisan legislation to ensue, to go through the House after such an agreement if Democrats were on well, board? That will be up to Hakeem Jeffries. Okay. Got it. But this is very much related, of course, to what's happening not only in the Middle East, but in Ukraine, because the president is going to speak tonight, mm -hmm. and he's going to make the argument that the American people taxpayer dollars should be spent to help uh, support these two democracies, particularly Israel. You can't do that if there's no House Speaker. That's right. Well, we'll, ha we'll have to have a House Speaker, and I hope that, that uh, shall we say, there'll be some order, the House will be in order, and that we can go forward. But uh, to take, to, before we get to that place, let me say our president has been just so strong uh, he just understands so well the relationship between the United States and Israel as our values partner, as our strategic partner, and also uh, our role in the world to be respectful of other people. So I think that he has handled all this magnificently, as he did with Ukraine. He has been a great uh, a global leader. You mentioned uh, America's role in the world. I don't need to tell you hundreds of thousands of Gazans. They're trying to get out of yes. Gaza innocent civilians. The Arab world so far is not giving them a place to go. Uh, this year, the U.S. is giving Jordan more than a billion dollars in aid. Egypt, 170 million. How much of an obligation do they have? Well, in the case of Jordan, they have been receiving refugees from uh, Syria mm -hmm. for a very long time. Uh, so they have, they're almost to a, a point of of overcapacity in terms of absorbing people. But let me just say this in terms of the whole issue. We always have to stipulate to a set of facts. The fact is, is that Hamas is a terrorist organization, so designated by the United States of America, that's how we regard them. They made a barbaric, brutal attack on Israel, killing maybe a thousand people, maybe more. 
in a state about the population and the size of New Jersey. Imagine if that had happened here. And so when we see the reaction to, oh, uh, what, what's going to happen in return, well, there has to be some stopping of the Hamas from doing this. And so, so not, I'm not talking about vengeance, we're talking about security. So people calling for a ceasefire are, are premature? Well, it, again, I don't know what the nature of their ceasefire is, but the fact is, is that whatever happens, we have to protect the civilian, the, the, the people of Gaza, who are not Hamas. But that's hard to do. And Hamas provoked this, knowing it would evoke a response and would have, then they'd be hiding behind shields of civilian people. But we, as Americans, we, well, I always tell the story of Israel. When I was there once, a speaker, the, I visited the Hadassah Hospital. And there, the, a couple of days before, there had been an incident where Palestinians had attacked uh, Jewish people there, Israelis. And they said, we treated them both the same. We didn't treat the Palestinian differently because he was Palestinian. We treated him the same because we are Jewish. These are people of... Uh, you know, it's, it's it's so sad to see them get attacked, and then people say, "Well, when they try to defend themselves, uh, it's uh, uh, it's it doesn't share our values." No, they do share our values. But the president said it so well: we do have to help the people of Gaza. The Arab countries have to do more, especially Egypt, in letting them in the corridor there. And uh, again, I, I, I Jordan has really carried a big load of of. Uh, of Syria. refugees uh, yeah. uh, from Syria. Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you so much for coming on. I and really appreciate it. Yeah, well, let's hope and pray that everyone can be as safe as possible on all sides of this conflict. Thank you so much. Thank you. And up